Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words of the words of the developer. Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail is a tactical war game from the creators of the Ultimate General series. Set amidst the epic naval campaigns in the period of the American Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. Before we start guys, let's have a look at the should I say it, lack of graphical options for this game? Considering this is a, on a PC, that's pretty poor. That's a poor fucking show in there. I mean, the graphics look nice. Uh, it, it runs well uh, on my PC. Uh, the sound's good. The sound effects and the music's all good. But it's a bit devoid of options, methinks. You can rebind the keys, so that's a plus anyway. So this game is from the same developers who have made Naval Action. You might remember I, I did an early access, a very early review of that. Um, I should really follow that up. Um, they also did Ultimate General Gettysburg and uh, Civil War. And this is kind of a, a mismatch of them all stuck into one with more new features. Uh, but this is only a single player game, whereas Naval Action was multiplayer. This is single player only. Now, I've been playing this a couple of days. I haven't finished it. And I'm enjoying it. I really am enjoying this game. This is kind of like the first game, I guess, that's made me feel like a proper admiral. I mean, this time I feel like I'm in charge of something. I feel like I'm the one calling the shots on everything. I mean, the amount of management you have to do in this game is just incredible. You decide on your fleet, you have to buy them to start with. And you decide who captains them, who your officers are, who your armies are that you put inside the, the, the merchant ships, who commands them, what traits they're going to have, what traits you're going to have, what purchase ships are going to have, what cannons you're going to put into them, and what kind of fleet you want, essentially. I mean, do you want a fast, manoeuvrable fleet, or do you want a slow, big, heavy, mass gun, freaking juggernaut of a fleet? And all these things matter massively, because... This game is pretty brutal, I would say. And let's talk about that, because what I don't like about this game is the difficulty levels. I've been playing it on medium. I haven't lost a battle yet, but my goodness, I've come close a few times. But what I don't like is the scaling. See, if you were playing it on easy, um, I think it's going to be more realistic, because when you play it on medium or hard, the enemy scale their ships. So, for example, if you, for example, bought a rank 5 ship early on, the next mission that you have um, in on the sea, the enemy will all of a sudden have better ships than you. And, yeah, that's a bit. So if I do a playthrough of this, like a stream, I'm going to do the naval on easy. It kind of sucks because I don't want it to be on easy. I want a... I want it to be on medium or hard uh, combat, but I don't want to be fighting against bigger ships all the time. And that kind of pisses me off. So I hope they do something about that. Um, th there should be an option to turn off AI scaling without it actually in interfering with how good the AI is. And I've found the AI f***ing good. I really have. The AI in this game is good. Um, it's very impressive, the AI in this game. I'll quickly tell you how the game works, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what the what the combat's like. So the game puts you in charge of your fleet. You can either be British or American. Now, if you're the British, you're kind of fighting against the Spaniardos. Am I allowed to say that? The Spanish, guys. You're not allowed to say the Spaniardos anymore because that's cultural misappropriation, and you can go to jail for 20 years. Obviously, if you play the Americans, you're fighting against the British um, in the, the War of Independence, where we let them win. You can buy new ships uh, from the shop. <laughs> There's a shop uh, where you buy your new ships from. And each month, the ships will change in there. So if, if you need a, a ship, get it while you can. Um, I had a problem with that. I needed a merchant ship because they're the only ones that can carry big amounts of troops. And I let it go for one month. And then the next month, when I really needed it, there wasn't a one for sale. So I kind of screwed myself over. I still won the battle because I'm awesome. But, you know... So you buy what ships you want, you put your crew in, you have to decide who's captaining that, who's the midshipman and all the, the rest of it. And you do that by looking at the traits. They have Everybody has traits in this and they improve their traits or get worse depending on how they fare in combat. So a shit general who loses battles is going to get shitter. So eventually he'll become French. Mac, you can't just... That was a joke. Come on, seriously. 
But if they're good, they will get better and better and better, and that is what you want. So putting the right guy in, in command of the right ship, the right general in command of the right army is essential. You also get perks that you can put in yourself at the end of each battle. Uh, you also get cash for winning each battle, which allows you to buy more ships, more men, more captains, more crew, and more guns, and more everything else. And there's a lot of stuff to do in between battles in this game. There's a lot of stuff to manage, a lot of things to keep an eye on, and that's what makes this game great, because you do feel like that admiral in charge. But anyway, what you really want to know is what's the battle like there's two types of battles guys uh, there's land battles and the sea battles in this uh, the sea battles can be a little bit boring they get a bit repetitive and they can go on a long time but some of the land battles to be honest with you i've had a battle go on easily over an hour they're so immersive you can speed up time though if you are getting a little bit impatient um, I'll, let's talk about the ship combat first. You don't actually fire the cannons. You can tell your ship to hold fire, but as soon as you tell it to open fire, it just will automatically when it becomes in range. Now, everything is important in these battles. You've got to look at the wind direction. You've got to look at your sails, where you have them. Battle sails is where you want it, so you can manoeuvre better. But also, you've got to think about how a, a ship will react in the wind. Um, if there's a, a wind blowing from, say, the east to the west, and your ship is heading north then it's hitting your ship from the the side so it would push it over a little bit so your left-sided guns will not fire very far because they'll be pointing down a bit and all that matters in this game and it's really really good that they've done that kind of attention to detail so having the wind uh, holding the wind on your side is very very important tactic in this and trying to keep that for as long as possible you can pummel the enemy ship without them even being able to retaliate and that is something that i've done quite a bit in this and i really enjoy that tactic you can also get up close and personal to them fire different kinds of shot you can uh, fire um the, the 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 balls with the chains the, the Get what it's called which will rip the sails down or you can fire a canister which will take out the crew then you can board them and uh, take over the ship or you if they surrender you can launch a little rowboat from your ship and over to there and take the ship that way or you can scuttle the ship whatever you want to do now the land battles are i think brilliant in this i mean they are pretty you land your um your army from a ship uh, on little rowing boats onto a beach that, of your choosing as well and then you are totally in command of everything that goes on on the land and i strongly suggest you play it on the minimum of medium don't play the land battles on easy um because i'm playing them on medium and getting through it by the skin of my teeth and i'm not brilliant at this game and one of the battles I had was uh, to take over this settlement and it changed hands at least four times in the space of an hour. And it was one of the best battles I've ever had in a, in a strategy game. We were just, I was willing my men to take, we took the high ground, we pummeled it with cannon to start with. Then as they backed off, we slowly gingerly moved in. Uh, I took a hold of it. I tried to move me uh, artillery up, but they were countering and I was scared. So I left my artillery back and my guys got kind of forced to withdraw so we pulled back a bit they took it over again so we were back where we were again then i took it back off them and it was to and in front like this and eventually i got everybody up there but then the guys were, were exhausted the, the line started to break more reinforcements from them came up it was just epic absolutely epic and i loved that part. i mean and i've had another one similar to that as well the i think the balance is brilliant on the land i just think that on the sea it's a little bit um iffy uh, the balance is it is, is just not I mean this is just me playing it on medium and, and coming across huge enemy ships and it's like hang on why, why would I be fighting that at this stage I don't have anything like their ships and it's it's hard I haven't lost a battle yet but my goodness it's got close and I found that the sea battles are not as interesting as the land battles but this game is a combination of both it has more sea than land um, it's a game that you're gonna have to sink a lot of time into a hell of a lot of time into I've done um, 13, 14 hours in this so far, and I've only scratched the surface of it. There's 30 missions in the actual early access version, and that's spread over, I think, two acts. There's going to be another, or chapters, and there's another two chapters coming in early access with another 30 missions, I believe. So a lot of content for the money, and it's worth a buy because it's fun. And if you like these kind of games with the um, Age of Sail kind of battles, musket warfare and there's a lot of upgrades you can have for, for, for your land troops as well 
through like a, a tech tree if you like then you're going to like this game because it has the best of both really so i'm thumbing this up even though it's in early access and i will hopefully try when it fully releases to come back and give a final definitive review but at the moment yes absolutely a brilliant game really fun really enjoyable definitely worth a buy